Happy Tuesday, everyone. Good morning to you and welcome to our Tuesday morning prayer and devotion. We have some praise reports to share with you this morning. Jamie Tibbs has recovered from COVID. We're thanking the Lord for that. Jessica and Mike Coatney are also well on their way to recovery from COVID. Uh, Jessica is still uh, tired quite a bit and has been using an inhaler at times, but is doing well otherwise. So we thank the Lord for uh, Debbie Biddick's children um, recovering well. David Harris is cancer-free per his last two scans, and his family expresses their appreciation for our prayers. What a wonderful report this morning. And just yesterday, as we were praying, uh, we claimed some new cancer-free diagnoses off this rather long list of those who are battling cancer. And, um, and we received that answer to prayer just yesterday. So thank the Lord for that. Uh, we do have many who are still battling cancer. And so let's continue to pray for them. Nathan Van Ingman, Lisa Workman, Christy Smith, Terry Adams' friend, Michael Boland, Monica Harmon, Linda Fox, Del Bishop, Lydia, Philip Randall, Tanya Schutz, Dwayne Lewis, Alicia Piero, Diane Escher, Claire, Marsha Moore's friends' grandparents, Jenny Coffey, James Graham's aunt, Kathy Bloss, Aaron Payne, Kathy Burks, Dennis Phelps, Sylvia Lairmore, Kay, Ari Bowers, Edie Percival, and a friend who reached out to me last week who's been diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer. All of these needs today, we are claiming those cancer-free diagnoses for them as well. We do need to pray for prayer or for peace and comfort today for some families who have lost someone dear to them. Uh, just learned yesterday afternoon that Michelle Ogilvie's sister, Lisa, this is her oldest sister, passed away early yesterday morning. So Michelle and her family need our prayers during this difficult time. Michelle Walker's grandfather, Gerald Hudson, passed away Sunday. We need to pray for peace and comfort for Michelle and her mother, Betty, and all of their family. Uh, Shane May passed away Sunday night after a strenuous bout of pneumonia. We need to hold up his family in our prayers today. We have many who are currently battling COVID. William and Grover Strasener, J.B. Goforth's sister, LaVon, who is on a ventilator, uh, Miss Angie, uh, who has been in the hospital with COVID pneumonia. We did learn yesterday that she has uh, been discharged from the hospital and is recovering now at home. So we thank the Lord for that good report as well. John Vaughn with COVID and flu, Pastor Carl Adams, Jessica uh, and Mike Coatney, believing for their continued and full recovery. Zach Osgood's dad, Judy Johnson's sister, Jenny and her family. Uh, Carmen's aunt Norma, believing for continued improvement there. Uh, Dee Dee's sister, Julie, and her husband, Paul, and son, Ryan, that they would continue to recover. And also Dee Dee's nine-month-old great-niece, Emery, who we just learned yesterday, has COVID as well. Others with lung and respiratory conditions not related to COVID, Don and Betty Cossey, both with chronic bronchitis, and Robbie Northrup and Kendra Ortiz with COPD. Sister Judy Williams has been recovering from a sinus infection, uh, Chloe Isaac is getting ready to start immunoglobulin infusions. Melena Cummins, Beth Wheatley, and Marsha Moore suffer with migraines. And uh, Beth was feeling worse yesterday, running fever. So let's continue to hold her up in our prayers today uh, for that as she battles sickness. Uh, Jasmine Fields has been uh, dealing with premature labor and needs our prayers today. We have several children needing our prayers. Myra, Lorelei, Jenna, and Tucker, all battling cancer. Tano Lopez with spina bifida. Abram Page, who was born with GNAL1 disorder. Uh, Abel Ray with PKU syndrome. And Grady Sappington's grandson uh, with developmental issues. Uh, baby Elsie has a heart problem uh, that has been ongoing and has had much uh, treatment and surgery. Um, and we want to pray for her uh, complete healing today. Also, adults with heart issues, Penny Hudson, Jake Billingsley, Pastor Steve Sullivan's father, Cheryl LaChance, Kenny Prenzel, and Brenda Storm's friend, uh, Melvin. 
Uh, my classmate, Misty McElroy, um, who had a heart attack recently, I forgot to post that praise report. Uh, she was able to return to work just literally a few days later, and we're thankful that her situation was resolved quickly. Uh, Zach Osgood's brother um, has a seizure disorder and needs our prayers. Uh, those with back issues today, Pam Pulliam's daughter Jenny, Melana Cummins, Bob O, Tammy Lawson, James Graham, Britt Moore, Michael Parrott, Terry Adams. We want to pray for Renee today who has mobility issues due to problems with her hips and knees. Bob Perkins and Barbara Owens need the healing of shingles. Jamie Jo Day needs healing of her liver. And we're also praying for Frank Day, uh, who's been battling sickness for several days. Heather Spence, Michael Parrott, Olivia, Terry Adams, and Regina Marlin's granddaughter, Aubrey, all have GI issues. Kristen's neighbor, Natalie, has GI issues as well and is also diabetic. Uh, J.R. Johnson uh, is diabetic and has been in the hospital with pneumonia. Others with diabetes include Terry Adams' friend, Marcia, Tim Workman, Emily Stanley, Cheryl LaChance for the Pulliam, Christian Carr and Titus Dornbach and myself. Uh, those with kidney issues, Tim, Jim Connor is awaiting a kidney transplant and Brother Virgil Pulliam's brother needs healing of his kidneys, healing of cirrhosis of the liver and healing of pancreatitis. Uh, Brother Marty DeLott and Brother Riley Marsh need healing of MS. Tim Workman, Russ, my dad, Ron Bryant, and my mother-in-law, Beulah Ziegler, all suffer from the effects of Parkinson's disease so let's continue to hold them up in our prayers today. And we're praying for continued recovery for Brother Billy Huey, Carmen's cousins Kelly and Shannon, Tina's mother, and Sheila Sappington, all recovering from stroke. We're praying for Russ today, who's recovering from a broken clavicle. We received a good report on him yesterday. Anita broke her neck recently in an accident and needs our continued prayers for recovery. Eric Williams had major ankle surgery and is going through now six months of rehab. Uh, we also need to pray for Ray, uh, for Megan Rackley, uh, who we reported yesterday was able to be transferred home from rehab after suffering uh, terrible injuries in the tornado in Crothersville. If you remember, she was actually in a coma uh, for quite some time, and uh, but the Lord spared her life, and now uh, she is back home recovering. So let's continue to pray for her and her family. Baby Brantley Joe is recovering from open heart surgery. So let's continue to pray for him and his family. And also uh, for J.B. Goforth, who remains on hospice care. In our other health needs this morning, Regina Bishop, Shirley Garner, Judy Williams' sister Mary, Shirley Ruminer, Kevin Gossett, Brother and Sister Pulliam's granddaughter Morgan, Meredith, Jimmy Holden, Bobby Larmy, and Nicole. We have North American missionaries that we are praying for this month, Pastor Aaron and Sister Rachel Castillo, and the church they pastor in Springfield, Missouri. We're praying for revival, uh, for God's blessings upon them. We're also praying for Victor Jackson and his family, uh, who are starting a new work in the Orlando area, and uh, Pastor Throng and Sister Nuko Sang, who are in St. Louis City. This is a Burmese preaching point in the Bevo Mill area. So let's remember these new church plants today, as well as many spiritual and family needs that we are covering daily. Marsha and Britt Moore and their family, especially direction in the situation with their son, Josh, but they need prayers for all the children and their granddaughter. Let's remember Marsha's friend and her family that she's been witnessing to, uh, Debbie Biddick's family, our Mingo RCF residents. I, need especially your prayer covering this Thursday evening. Um, I'll be doing a Bible study there, Lord willing. So let's pray for good results there. Mingo Job Corps students and alumni need our prayers. Judy and Mike Williams family. Uh, Judy has special and spoken requests for their grandson, Michael, their granddaughter, Rebecca, and Rebecca's mother, Dana. Let's remember Cheryl's family member, Josiah, Terry Adams' children, Pam Williams' children, Charles and Amber Gossett, Barbara Owens, Jennifer and Brenda's family, Andrea Perkins with a special and spoken need, baby G's adoption process, 
Annette and Dave who need healing in their marriage, Grace's best friends family, and Grace's circle of friends, James and Angela Graham and their family, Sheila Outlaw, Mark and Caitlin, the Sappington family, Regina Marlin's family, Art Chandler, Beulah's family, Caroline Sexton's family, Alicia, D.D. Sealert's biological father and his family, the Rush family with an unspoken need that Rebecca has submitted for a need within their family. And let's remember all those today who suffer from drug addiction and need deliverance in that regard today. I welcome each of you who are joining me this morning. I appreciate you so much. Good to see you this morning. Anthony and Marcia, Carmen and uh, Brother Pulliam with us today, Pam Pulliam, uh, Ronnie Gilbert, we're glad you're watching today. Uh, Kristen, thank God for each of you this morning who are part of this team. Judy is with us this morning. And uh, if I didn't mention Sherman, I think I did, but if I didn't, we're glad that you're here, of course, today. What a wonderful team that we have this morning uh, to go to prayer with us today. I want to read to you from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 this morning, just a, a reminder for us um, who are in the church today, uh, something very important that we need to remember in our own lives to guard our own attitude, our own spirit. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, Paul said, Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is, is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. Now, Paul was asking us some heavy questions there as he wrote to the Corinthian church. And we have all heard uh, people say things like, don't judge me. Who are you to judge me? Who made you judge? Don't you know that Jesus said to judge not? And you know what? In the proper context, all of those uh, statements are true. And we've heard those own statements, I'm sure, come off of our lips at times. And the reason why is not necessarily because someone is judging us, even though there are times that people are unfairly uh, saying harsh things. But when we feel condemnation, you know, Jesus said um, that he did not come into the world to condemn the world. He said this, he said, the world is condemned already. And so when people resist truth, um, sometimes it's because they're under conviction, uh, which is totally different than condemnation. Um, but when when the person feels condemned, uh, it's because that they are part of the world and the world is condemned. And so they're feeling that that is present in their condition. And so if we feel condemnation as a child of God, we need to examine ourselves. Are we closer to the world right now than we are to God and to his, his people? Uh, because we should not feel uh, that way. So how do we make sure we don't feel that way? Well, we have to understand that there is a proper place for judgment in the life of a child of God. Uh, Paul was embarrassed by the failure of believers in Corinth to use proper judgment when they thought another church had done them wrong instead of settling the matter wisely among themselves they had engaged lawyers and sued their brothers in secular court of law and we are in a dangerous place when we are more open to the world's judgments this condemned world's judgments than to the church's righteous judgment biblical judgment is healthy I want to say that again biblical judgment is healthy we are to be judged by the word of God. When the man of God preaches to us, um, there is judgment that comes uh, from the word that we have to respond to and receive. I'm not talking about condemnation. I'm talking about judging whether we are in the right or the wrong and whether or not we need to respond uh, to the word of God to correct that. 
We are not judges who determine a person's eternal destiny, but we are called to judge between right and wrong and between truth and error. And Paul said that one day we will judge even angels and nations. And so it's better uh, if we understand the role of judgment in our own lives now, if we're going to be able to exercise that um, in the future. So we need to remember that today. Judgment, the Word of God tells us, judgment begins at the house of God. We need to allow ourselves to be judged now as we're uh, going through this life and get it right in this life uh, so that we do not have to face that harsh judgment that's going to come at the end that this world is going to face. And so when we pray, we pray like David prayed, Lord, try me um, to, uh, as we draw close to the Lord in prayer, we allow him to search us, to try us, uh, to see if there be any wickedness in us and um, so that we can inherit life everlasting. Well, God bless you today for being a part of this devotion. Let's go to prayer this morning. And let's remember as we pray that as we're submitting to God in prayer and to his will, we are being judged right now uh, so that we will not be uh, judged harshly um, on that great day of the Lord. Lord, we thank you today for your word to us. We thank you, Lord, for your plan for our lives. And we come today submitting to your lordship, submitting to your will, making a conscious decision this morning that we're not going to live under the condemnation of this world, but we're going to learn to judge with righteous judgment in our own lives, to heed your word. Whatever changes that you want me to make in my life today, I pray that you would prompt me through your word, whether it's through the man of God as he preaches to me or as she preaches to me, or Lord, as I'm being taught in Bible study, or even as um, I'm going through devotion and private devotion of just reading your word each day on my own. Lord, let your spirit convict me that I might not be condemned. Help me, Lord, to judge right and wrong appropriately and to line up with your word today. I want to be what you want me to be. Hallelujah. Help me, God, not to be among those who have no faith today and who are uh, not trusting in you. But I want to believe, Lord, for every miracle every wonder that you desire to perform among your people this morning, and we're going to give you praise for it. We pray, God, for those who are battling cancer. Every person that we've named on this list today is a candidate for a miracle. And we thank you, Lord. If it was not for our impossibilities, we would not be able to receive your healing. And Lord, we trust in your word today. With your stripes, we are healed. In Jesus' name. We believe for your peace and comfort today. Lord, you are our comforter. You are the, the peace speaker. And we thank you today, God, for speaking peace and comfort and strength to these families who are suffering right now, who have lost someone dear to them. For Michelle and her family, as they're mourning the passing of her sister, Lisa, we pray for Michelle Walker's family, for her mother, Betty, for their entire family mourning the loss of Michelle's grandfather. We pray, God, for the May family today as they are coping with their loss of shame. God, we believe for you to comfort and to strengthen, to hold them up this morning as we lift up their names in prayer. Lord, each of these who are battling COVID and are in different stages of recovery, we thank you, Lord, that you are greater than this virus. And we give you praise today for our healing we thank you, God, for touching William and Grover today, touching LaVon and, and touching John Vaughn and Miss Angie. We thank you for these who have been showing signs of recovery. We pray for Pastor Carl Adams, for Jessica and Mike today, for Zach's dad, for Judy Johnson's sister and her family, for Carmen's Aunt Norma, for Dee Dee's sister Julie and her husband and son, for Dee Dee's nine-month-old great-niece Emery, Lord, each of these have we believe for full recovery. We thank you, Lord, for each report of those that are doing better already. We pray, God, for those with other lung and respiratory problems and, and uh, conditions that uh, make them immunocompromised and easily susceptible to COVID. God, we pray for your protection for them today. We pray for Sister Judy as she's recovering 
from this sinus infection. Lord, we pray for Chloe as she's starting immunoglobulin therapy. We pray, Lord, for these who are suffering with migraines. Touch Sister Malena and Sister Beth today. Touch Sister Marcia in Jesus' name. We believe for Sister Beth, Lord, for her fever to break and for her to continue, Lord, toward improvement today. We pray for Jasmine, Lord, for you to protect her and her unborn child in Jesus' name, that her delivery would be safe. We pray for these children this morning, Myra and Lorelei, Jenna and Tucker, as they battle cancer, Tana Lopez with spina bifida, and Abram Page with GNA on one disorder. We pray for Grady's grandson, for his healing today. We pray, God, for Abel this morning, that he would be healed of this uh, condition of PKU syndrome. We pray for baby Elsie today for her heart issues. We pray for each adult on our list today who's dealing with heart problems. We pray for Zek's brother, Lord, for healing of seizures. For those with back problems today, Lord, you are the mighty God and you are able to heal them right now. We speak to that pain and command it to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. God, you are our provider. You make a way where there seems to be none. And we thank you, Lord. Lord, you whose paths are in the sea. You, God, who take us through impossibilities. We thank you today. We give you glory. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. We pray, Lord, for Jamie Jo this morning, for healing of her liver, for Barbara and Bob and others who are battling shingles today. We believe for their healing. For those with GI problems, Heather and Michael, Terry and Regina's granddaughter, Aubrey, for Natalie today, dealing with GI problems and with diabetes. For J.R. Johnson, dealing with pneumonia and diabetes today. For each of these others who are suffering with diabetes, we claim healing this morning. For Terry Spren Marsha, for Tim Workman, for Emily Stanley, for Cheryl Chance, and for Brother Pulliam, for Christian and Titus, for myself today, we believe for healing. Lord, for Jim Connor awaiting a kidney transplant right now, we believe for his healing touch. We believe for Brother Pulliam's brother to be healed today. We pray for Beulah and Russ, for Tim, for my dad today to be healed of Parkinson's disease. We believe for Brother March and Brother DeLott, Lord, for victory over MS. We pray for continued recovery right now for Brother Huey, for Carmen's cousins, Kelly and Shannon, for Tina's mother, for Sheila Sappington, Lord, each of them dealing with stroke recovery today. We know, Lord, that you're bringing them through. We pray for Russ as he continues to recover from a broken clavicle. We believe for Anita today for recovery from this broken neck, for Eric Williams recovering from ankle surgery and going through rehab, for Megan Rackley, Lord, we thank you for sparing her life. We pray, God, that she would continue to recover now at home. We give you praise and glory for it. We pray for baby Brantley as he continues to recover from open heart surgery. We pray for JB Goforth and his family today as he's on hospice care. We pray for these other health needs that we don't know all the details of. But God, we believe for their healing today, for Regina and Shirley, for Mary, for Shirley Ruminer, for Kevin Gossett, for brother and sister Pulliam's granddaughter Morgan, for Meredith, for Jimmy Holden, for Bobby Larmy, and for Nicole. We thank you, Lord, for that touch that they're receiving today. We pray, Lord, for our North American missionaries, brother and sister Castillo, for Pastor Thong and sister uh, Nuko saying today, God, we believe for that Burmese preaching point uh, to have great victory and be established uh, as a mighty church in that city. We believe for Victor Jackson and his family, Lord, that you would bless their new work in Orlando. We pray, God, for the spiritual needs among our family and friends this morning. God, that you would move on behalf of them. Lord, that you would draw the backsliders to yourself, that those that are discouraged, Lord, will receive the encouragement that they need this morning. Hallelujah, Lord, that those that are feeling condemned would accept the judgment of your word today and respond to conviction instead of being pressed down under condemnation today. Hallelujah, we pray, God, for many souls to come into your kingdom. Hallelujah, we pray for Marcia and Britt's family, for their son Josh. Lord, give them direction in dealing with this. We pray for Debbie's family. We pray for the Mingo RCF residents that we're reaching out to. 
that have been attending our church. God, you see their issues today, and Lord, you're able to help them. We pray, God, that you would move in our Bible study there this week. We pray for our Job Corps students, uh, that you would move in their lives. We pray for Judy and Mike's family. We believe for Michael and Rebecca and Dana today that you would move in their grandchildren's, in Judy's grandchildren's lives. Uh, we pray, God, for Rebecca's mother, Dana, today. Move in her life, Lord. Deliver her, we pray. All those who are suffering from drug addiction, God, we believe for their deliverance. We pray for Cheryl's family member and for Josiah, for Terry's children, for Pam's children, for Charles and Amber Gossett. We believe for Barbara Owen's salvation today. We pray for Jennifer and Brenda's family, Lord. We believe for Andrea Perkins today for her unspoken need to be met. We pray for baby G's adoption, for Annette and Dave's marriage, uh, for healing there. We pray for Grace's best friend's family, for Grace's circle of friends who need salvation. We pray for James and Angela Graham today and their family. We pray for Sheila Outlaw, for Mark and Caitlin, for the Sappingtons, uh, for Regina's family, for Art Chandler, for Beulah's family and Caroline's family. We believe for Alicia today, for D.D. Sealert's biological father and his family, for Rebecca Rush and her family need today. Oh, God, we trust you. We believe, God, for your work to be done in us this morning as we give these needs to you, as we lay them before your throne, God, and walk away this morning trusting in you. Let us receive comfort today and assurance of the promises of your word that these things will surely come to pass. And we give you praise and glory for all these things. And it's in your mighty name, Lord Jesus, that we ask it all. Amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you for praying with me. Once again, I look forward to a Wednesday morning prayer and devotion. And now less than 24 hours away, let's join together once again. I pray you have a blessed day today in the Lord.